Alright everyone, this is going to be part 2 of the Megascore install. As you guys already know from watching the first video, the truck is now running and I found out a few things are not going to work exactly how I wanted them, which is fine. Idle control doesn't work at all. It has no RPM signal at all with the cam position sensor not hooked up. That gives me an excuse to just remove the factory ECU or at least unpin all of the engine stuff from the factory ECU and just leave it at that and then when the five speed swap happens remove the rest of the stuff everything else on it works except for the alternator it was not charging it's controlled by the ECU I think I thought there was a regulator on the alternator but I think it's just some sort of a I don't know like a voltage box or something something to maybe translate what the ECU sends I'm not really sure I got the regulator from the Eclipse back in this box right here so once I've got the factory ECU's wiring all stripped out, basically I'm just going to pull all the wires out and pull them out this direction. Once that is taken care of, all the old ECU wiring is completely pulled out of the way, I'm going to run the sensor return from the Mega Squirt because I'm going to need that because I originally was going to use the return from the which is just a ground signal from the ECU. Since a uh, factory ECU is not going to be in there and doing anything, I'm going to use the one from the Mega Square, which would have had to have been done eventually anyway. And then we'll be able to drive it, which will be great. I'll be able to get the idle properly adjusted. It'll probably need to uh, retune it a little bit, for at least for idle behavior. Uh, I know I don't have everything else done, but the idle, it was sitting between like 14, it was sitting right where it does stock. Uh, for idle AFRs. Yeah, I guess we might as well just get started, start pulling the old factory wires out, start getting the Mega Squirt stuff rewired, and get it ready for its first drive. Alright, I just wanted to give you guys an update on where I am at. I got all the wires stripped. Unfortunately, I was not able to de-pin the plug like I wanted to because this thing just doesn't come apart like a normal plug would. It's not meant to be taken apart very easily. But I just went and cut the wires off and left to be at that. I have the throttle position sensor almost wired. It just needs the return wire hooked up to it. I got it tapped into the 5 volt wire from the... Uh, crank position sensor because they both use the same 5 volt. Injectors are still together of course. Uh, I removed the ignition coil right here uh, which cleaned this up a little bit. I need to cut that zip tie down there but uh, oil line I'm gonna have to find another a different way to kinda hold it up into place because I don't want it to fall onto the exhaust. All the regulator I need to go in here and remove this bundle of wires. It's the only bit of stuff that's left that needs to be taken off and uh, I need to remove this regulator thing which for whatever reason just doesn't work. I need to remove that from the alternator completely and then just run the Eclipse, oh, the old Eclipse one that I had and then uh, remove the map sensor, plug these two ports uh, well, this one was already plugged, but I put a different plug that fit better on it. Plugged the one for the map sensor, so that's totally gone. Everything's all cleaned up. And I zip-tied the harness up. When the five-speed swap goes down, the engine bay will be totally empty. I will know everything that I do and don't need, because I'll be able to see it very well, because I'll know what stuff is hooked up to the transmission that doesn't need to be there and everything uh, to do with that. And I should be able to completely pick through this entire thing, throw the factory ECU away. Well, I'm not going to throw it away. I'm going to hang on to it just in case somebody needs a 92 ECU because they're known to go bad. I'll keep that around 
and then I will go and pitch all of the harness bits that run into it will be completely removed we won't need them anymore uh, there's a few things in this harness that are still necessary like lights and uh, heater controls actually those come out down there I think the lights are the only thing and a few ground wires and uh, the windshield wipers and a couple other little things are hooked up to that but uh, for the most part that whole this whole bundle up here will be just real thin and I'll be able to clean it up make it look nice and then run the mega square wiring harness separate I'm gonna clean it up after like the five speed swap goes down because uh, there will be a lot less mess back here and I'll be able to reorganize things and make it less ugly for now I'm just gonna do what I did with the factory harness I'm just gonna zip tie wires keep put them somewhere safe and then of course in the future I'll clean them up I just want them all to be super easy to access because I learned my lesson with the Eclipse where you do not want to just go and try to permanently tighten everything up and do all that because there's a good chance that you're gonna have to go back through and find a wire that's wrong or relocate stuff and uh... It really sucked redoing all the wiring twice. This is all going very well. I'm going to finish getting the throttle position and crank position sensor plugged in. I'm going to go and hook all of the injectors back up. I'm going to get the intake and air temp sensors hooked up over there and clean that little mess up. Remove that regulator, get the new regulator on. Alright, I think I got everything hooked up at this point. I decided to mount the alternator regulator right there. I had an extra L corner brace that I used to make this table out of and I used that to make a bracket to just bolt the regulator onto the alternator itself and it I mean it looks okay there it'll work it's already grounded to the alternator got switch power running to it the fuse box over here is full so I had to run it without a fuse at the moment it'll be fine for a little bit I'll be opening a slot on that fuse box when I redo the fuel pump and get that thing set up the way it's supposed to so it'll be okay for now I'm gonna run the fuel pump signal off of the one that's inside and then I'll have the relay probably underneath of the truck right next to the uh, fuel pump so that'll be all good there once I get that squared away but for now it should work this is the one that was on the Eclipse and it did function fine I got it hooked up right there two wires that run off of it and like I said power and it grounds off the alternator and that is it got the cool and air temp sensors hooked up I got a bunch of extra wire everything I wired up I just left a ton of extra wire because too much is better than not enough if things are too long when I go and do the transmission swap I can cut them down reconnect them and put them exactly where I want them I'll have a better idea of where they need to go it's got wires chilling here stuff down here just away from things that get super hot things that could potentially cut through them got the intercooler piping put back together battery should be charged which means it's time to see if it'll start so I'm gonna open the door and see if it'll run and get the laptop turned on, hooked up to it and everything. By the door get open, I'll probably turn this fan on just to keep air circulating through so I don't smog myself out. The laptop ready to go and try and start it, see if it'll idle. I'll probably end up turning the distributor a little bit and I'll adjust a couple other little things. It's still coming down pretty good out there. So I will for sure have to put the hood back on, but it's not a big deal. I'll have to get the cover back on the battery too, but I'm gonna get everything ready. I'm gonna turn the key see if it charges and then as long as we know that it is charging we'll uh, start adjusting the ignition timing and uh, getting the fuel maps and stuff straight laptop is on and hooked up Let's see if it and it is connected what are we getting for coolant temp is reading correctly it's saying about 70 degrees and that's about what it is and estimated air temp that says degrees Fahrenheit and it's reading 25 degrees Fahrenheit. That may be off a little bit, um, but the coolant temp is right. Uh, throttle position needs recalibrated. Um, I think everything else is good. So uh, I'm going to see if I can figure out why this isn't reading right. Uh, I'm going to see why that's not reading right. I'm going to go pull the plug on the fuel pump so it shuts up because it's hardwired and then we'll try starting it or recalibrate stuff that's probably all it needs we'll try starting it and then I don't know if I'm gonna film the first drive if I can get it idle smooth I'll probably leave it at that because it's raining and this thing's difficult enough to drive in good weather uh, with the lack of power steering and the potential for things to go wrong I will take the camera with me in case something spectacular happens but I'm not gonna be able to like boost it or do any real tuning because it's too wet and uh, this thing doesn't track get a whole lot of traction when it's wet uh, even naturally aspirated it doesn't so 
Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how I'm feeling. We'll see uh, maybe if it'll stop raining. That would be pretty sick. Actually, I think it did stop raining. Anyway, I'm going to get that fixed, and we're going to try and start it. All right, I don't know how well you guys will be able to see, but coolant temp is reading correctly. Throttle position is reading correctly. Uh, coolant temp was already did this. Coolant temp for that meant air temperature. I just had to set it to a Chrysler temp sensor, and it's working. Air fuel seems to still be working, so... Uh, I'm going to give it a shot, see how it runs, and then I'm going to check the voltage. If I get it to idle, I'm going to go check the voltage and see if we're at about 14-something, because it's where it should be if the alternator's working. Let's see what happens. Actually, oh, fuel pump. Fuel pump. That'll make it angry. Let's, uh, let's take care of that. There we go. Fuel pump's on. And here we go. We're running. Not very smooth, but we are running. Let's see if I can figure out how to shut the warm up enrichment off, because I think that's part of my issue. I'm gonna play around with this and get it to idle, and then we'll see if the battery is charging. I think it is, but I'm gonna make sure and make sure it's charging right uh, once I get it to idle. So I'll be back in just a little bit. The alternator is charging. It's at about 14.4 volts right now, which is perfectly fine. I can adjust it later if it doesn't go up. It may just be down a little bit because it's charging uh, the battery because the battery was not all the way full. But. AFRs are getting up to about where they're supposed to be as well, which is good. Um, I think this is probably where I'm going to end the video. It's idling fairly well. I think the ignition timing needs played around with, and of course the AFRs might need messed around with too. Um, but it should be up to 14.7 once it's at a warm-up enrichment, which is about where it's getting to. But the truck runs. On Mega Squirt, like I said, I think this is the first ever Mega Squirt at 3.9. I don't, I don't know if anybody else has ever done it. Uh, runs good. I'm not gonna touch the throttle or anything because it might get angry if I do that. But if you guys like this video, please hit the like button if you are not already subscribed. Please subscribe. There will be much more of this to come. Like I said, this is only the beginning. Five-speed swap is coming, and then shortly after that, there will be a dyno tune coming. We'll see how much power a 3.9 liter can actually make. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys later.